Hey friends, hope you're doing well. So today I want to talk about the Utah housing shortage for a minute, some local laws and bills that are be, uh, that will be looking to be passed, and then also some national stuff. Uh, executive order from Joe Biden that uh, will most likely be going through. Uh, before I get into that, if you like this stuff and you're seeing this online, different social platforms, whatever it is, you can subscribe by clicking on one of the links uh, somewhere in the message you're getting this from, or you can go to keyrentersaltlake.com forward slash subscribe. Okay, guys. So first, I want to start off with the, the housing shortage that we're facing. I'm a member of um, the Government Affairs Committee and the General Board for the Utah Apartment Association. This is one of the big topics that we, we talk about. And um, also a member of NARPM, which is the National Association of of residential property managers in our in our Utah conference we had last Friday and in our government affairs committee we had on Wednesday, we talked about this. And here's one thing to keep in mind. Um, there are 55,000 households in Utah that are doubling up. And what that means is essentially 55,000 um, home or, or households that there's not enough homes for. That's the situation that we have. And so these people are doubling up or essentially they're living in other people's homes or family. Um, and we've got dual families and sometimes even three families living in one home. That's the situation that we're at right now. And so the discussion that we have is, okay, how do we, how do we allow for more development, developing in the vertical space, which is what we really have to do, especially in the Salt Lake Valley where we're restricted uh, by the mountains on both sides, as well as the lake and the point of the mountain. So we've got to be able to go vertical in some areas. And of course, there's cities that kind of push back on that. So um, that's one of the discussion points that we have. One of the um, uh, the bills that's potentially going to be uh, going forward and looking to get pushed through is a requirement to allow cities or to require cities to allow ADUs. And if you know what that is, it's an accessory dwelling unit, which is basically like having your primary residence or your primary home and then being able to build an apartment on the side of it or even behind it. So you're able to have a little bit of a, a rental um, or income property on your either your primary residence or you could have a rental property that uh, has a there's a house and you build an accessory dwelling unit as a part of it. So it's kind of like creating a duplex type situation, but it's in an effort to provide more housing for people. So that's one of the things. The other one is um, in university cities, in areas of universities, requiring cities to increase their occupancy limit from three unrelated adults to four. And so that's some areas up by the University of Utah, UVU, BYU, and some other areas. There are some cities that already allow that, but making that a requirement for those university areas. So that's a couple of things that we'll be following up on and keeping you informed on. Now, one of the, um, you know, as Joe Biden is now our president and um, he's been put in office, he has 30 executive orders so far. There may be more coming, but right now 30 executive orders that he's looking to have pushed through. One of those relating to housing is an extension of the eviction moratorium through at least March 31st. This is something we are really expecting, um, not surprised by it, especially where we're still, we're not out of the woods by any means and by any stretch relating to COVID and businesses being shut down and everything like that. But um, so that eviction moratorium being extended through March, uh, and I, I would expect it to actually continue beyond that. So what it's required us to do with key renter property management, you know, our various offices, as well as landlords and each of you that have rental properties, is we've had to be creative with how we approach evictions or approach, I should say, non-payment type situations. So here's just a few tips that you can implement with your rentals. Um, these are some of the things that we do with our clients. One of them is, of course, you're working with the tenants as best you can. There's many situations where the residents might need to be put on a payment plan or something to be able to work through their situation. But 
keep in mind that the, the eviction moratorium is not for all evictions. It's not for every situation. It's just for non-payment of rent. And the CDC order and everything there is it's it's for non-payment of rent relating to COVID reasons. Okay. So if you have a tenant that is violating the lease or you know, the, there's a situation where you might need to do, um, you know, terminate the lease because of smoking or pets or whatever it is, as long as you're building a, a record of those issues, you can still evict on those. Now, some courts are more difficult, are more difficult to work with now because they're either backed up with cases or there's just, um, they might be more sensitive to the tenant situation, but you still can do it successfully. Um, the other thing you can do instead of evicting for non-payment, you can actually sue the tenants for non-payment and you can get a judgment in place now while they're living in the house rather than waiting till after they vacate. It can increase your chances of being able to collect on it. Of course, if you're trying to sue someone that doesn't have any money, you're not gonna get any money right now. But if you can get that judgment in place, that can be helpful for you because there's no law against not being able to sue someone, um, but there is against displacing that person, okay? So that's one strategy you can use. Um, one thing I also recommend is don't try and do it on your own. The, you know, the, the eviction process, especially, there are people and stories and examples of people that have tried to test the system, so to speak, and they push through an eviction and guys, they can be subject to fines up to $200,000 for trying to push an eviction during this period of moratorium. And so don't try to do it on your own. Work with us or work with an eviction attorney. If you have a situation you really need to try to get out of, um, uh, feel free to reach out to us. But I hope this is helpful, you guys. So we've got a housing shortage that we're, we'll continue to work through. We've got some local laws and issues that we're working through as well as some national stuff. So it's all good. This is the, the world of property management and rental properties and is an exciting one. It's ever changing and it's a great place to be. So hope you have a great uh, rest of your day. Everyone take care. Thanks.